I got a bunch of Unreal Engine Marketplace animations that I want to use with this AAA Paragon character, but I also want to make my own animations. So we're going to take this to Blender 2.8, rig it, and then bring it back to the engine. Here is the end result we want, rigged and imported from Blender. The Epic Skeleton hierarchy is made with UEFI script. Retargeting anything on this is really simple. We can also add new bones like this shoulder pad, holsters, and the like. With Rigify and the script, we can get very close to Epic R2 like functionality. But with a Blender based workflow, this is a lot cheaper than the alternative. We do make a couple of changes. The Paragon character has its rifle and this cannon at the top along with the backpack integrated right into the primary mesh but I want to make it so that this character can share animations with other characters and have switchable weapons so I'm going to remove those in Blender and once we have it back in, in the engine like this I can very easily just switch the mesh to any other uh, character that I also rigged in Blender so all of these are characters that we have previously uh, made videos for so you can check those out on the on the YouTube channel if you like so let's start and see how we, we can get this done we begin as in the previous videos a to select everything x to delete it then go into units set the unit scale to 0 0.01 and use the mouse wheel to pull back a little and then with the N key bring in this column set the clipping distance to 50 meters and now we can do file, import, FPX, and then bring in the mannequin. So I'm going to select uh, no import animation in armatures. We want automatic bone orientation, import FPX. Now I can right click here and do a new collection. And then with the new collection selected, I will do file, import, FPX, find the FPX for the Paragon character no import animation and in armatures automatic bone orientation so import fbx and i can turn off the mannequin i can also turn off this new uh, paragon character again new collection select it do shift a armature human meta rig s key type in one zero zero because we set the unit scale it comes in small but we can uh, make it larger again. Now we have these three things here and in scripting we need to also bring in UE5 script. So find the script, open the text block with the uh, cursor on this bar, scroll to the end and then do run script once to get the extra panel in the armature section. Now I'm going to hide the meta rig and also the paragon character. I will select um, let's select the empty for the mannequin and do G Y one to move it back by one grid line and then the enter key to finalize everything. And now I can have these two characters on the screen at the same time. I'm also going to select one of these uh, bones here to select the armature for the Paragon character. And then in the armature section, I can go to display and put it in front to see what we have. And I will also go into post mode and alt a to deselect everything and i'm just going to hide these large bones these are ik bones ue5 script will auto generate these for us for so we don't really need to mess around with these so i can just hide them hide this and that one that one too so we have a better look at what uh this character's armature looks like now as you can see there are a lot of bones here uh the way paragon was made every character had unique animations basically and so what they've done is they've built in the weapons for every character right into the base mesh and the base skeleton so what you're seeing here are bones for the character but also for all of his weapons now what we don't want that i want to share this uh character well basically i want to share animations for this character with the rest of uh, rest of the characters in my game so what i want to do is just isolate the primary mesh from all of the weapons so let's do that now i'm going to hide the mannequin like so and then i'm just going to try and find where all of the 
weapon bones are. So this looks like one, one, right? So it says backpack here. What I can do is I can do G Y one, and the whole backpack moves away from the character. Similarly, there should be bone for the primary weapon someplace around here. Uh, is that it? So let's try G Y minus one. And yep, the whole weapon moves away, and it has a third weapon. Uh, I think this one cannon base. So G Z one, and I'm moving that away as well. Now I want to delete the weapon, so I have just the character. But now we have a problem. If I go into edit mode, everything snaps back into place, so we can't do that. So Control Z to undo that. Now, one thing that we can try is to go into pose mode and do control A and then apply pose as the rest pose. But that, well, while that keeps the bones in their uh, new place, the, the mesh for the weapons itself snaps back. So we can't do that either. So the proper way to do this is to first go into object mode, select the mesh, go into the modifiers tab, copy the armature modifier, and then apply the bottom one. Now it doesn't matter what what happens at the scene at this point. Sometimes when you do this, the mesh will be really badly contorted and twisted. So don't worry about it. We can just go back to object mode by, uh, we can go back to pose mode. First we have to select the armature, then go into pose mode. And now if we do control A, uh, everything is exactly the way we want it to be. We can switch between pose mode and edit mode and everything is still where we want it to be. So Alt E to deselect everything, B key to select all of these bones, X and then delete. Similarly, box select all of these, X, delete, box select these, X, and then delete the bones. Now we can go into object mode, select the mesh, and then in edit mode on the mesh, I can do Alt A, uh, the Z key go into wireframe, box select the mesh for the weapon, let's try that again, get grab all of it, box select this, then B key, box select all of that, and then do X, uh, delete vertices, and then we can go back into object mode, Z key, go back to solid, press click on the armature and then go back to pose mode. So now we have just the character and well, this still has some extra bones more than the Unreal Engine mannequin. So we have a spine, we have the clavicle, the arms and everything, but this uh, character has a few extra bones. For example, it has these shoulder pads. So if I select one of these bones, press the G key, you can see the whole pad is separate from the arm similarly it has a collar here right like this and of course it has all of these uh, face bones now we're not going to work on the face bones for this character and even if we did we won't keep these bones rigify has its own facial rig so if you wanted to use a, a rig for the face we'll use that one we won't have any use for these bones so in any case, this character doesn't, re doesn't really have anything to control the face, so we can ignore these bones. But we are going to keep the shoulder pad, uh, the knee pad, like like so, this, this bit here, and there's also a bone controlling a pad on the foot, so this bone over there. Now it also has a few extra twist bones that the Unreal Engine Mannequin doesn't have, but Unify Script has some options that'll just auto build those for us so we don't have to worry about it. I'm going to bring back the Mannequin and with the armature selected, I can go into the armature data properties and scroll down to the Unify Script panel. Now this armature's name is root001. You can check from over here and the armature for the mannequin is called root and the meta rig is of course the meta rig and you can check the names of these objects in the various collections. Now I'm going to go into object mode, select this armature for the mannequin, scroll up and put it in front so we can see both of them. 
and now with the armature for the character selected I can go to the file script panel and do setup character bone names and then click on this button to pose the character now if we turn off the bone overlays and just look at what's going on uh, the shoulders for the mannequin are kind of swept back with the chest puffed up and the character assumes the same kind of pose but I think it looks a little strange because the shoulders are pulling back a bit too much I think and also the fingers are kind of swept back whereas the fingers for the mannequin are kind of coming straight out of the palm so uh, we can examine why this is happening and what we can do to improve this so I'm going to bring back the overlays and then just do Control z to undo this if you look at the clavicle for the character this this bone is oriented like so whereas in the mannequin it's oriented like this and this is the cause of the this kind of stretching problem that we're seeing so to make it uh, better what we can do is we can just select this bit here and then i can do shift s cursor to select it and select this bit here to shift s selection to cursor and then i can select the bone and kind of just um, change its role so it's a bit more parallel to the ground and then i can do right click on this and just do semi tries now this looks a lot more like the the mannequin but still not quite as swept back as the mannequin is so which is pretty much exactly what we want here the other thing that we can improve is the position of the hand bone to get rid of the finger sweeping problem so i do just shift s uh, cursor to world origin just because i want to and then hide this bone the eye case hide that bone so you can see what's going on all right so this is the hand bone and you can see it's uh, it's kind of protruding right out of the hand whereas the hand bone for the uh, mannequin is uh, looks like this so let me just hide that and hide this twist bone so this is the hand bone let's see what this looks like up close so it's kind of to the front of the hand a little and then if you look at the side it's also kind of above the finger bones so if we can match this kind of uh, pose for the hand bone in the main character we'll get a very similar kind of post character after the script is done so um, let's see how we can change this so go back into object mode select this armature go into edit mode here I'm going to hide some of these bones so we can see a little bit better so hide the twist bone with the edge key and then I'm going to hide the lower arm and hide the lower twist as well now what we can do is um, select this bone go to yeah, the medium point on this um, icon then do shift s cursor to select it and then i can select this bit and do shift s selection to cursor uh, that just brings it a little closer to where i want it to be and then i can just position the camera to be where i can easily move the bone so i'm just going to select this bit here and then do g and then this kind of move it into place similar to what it is like in the mannequin now you're going to have to um, move the camera around a little and to make sure it's not uh, it's not uh, misplaced somehow because you're only seeing it from one direction so g key again sweep it a little bit to the front and then check from the other view again and then just repeat the process over and over until we have an acceptable result now after you're after you're done moving the hand bone what's really important here is to select this and then go into the armature data properties scroll up and turn on axes now the x-axis this red line needs to come straight out of the palm of the hand so if it's not uh, going straight out, you, you will want to change the roll value to make sure that it is. So I think it's already uh, pretty accurately played. So I don't think we can, we can improve this any better. 
So I'm just going to turn off the axis now and then right click on this and click on semi-crise to uh, do the other side. Now, one other thing that we need to fix here is this foot bone. So when we import it, the foot comes in like so and we this doesn't work for the UEFI script. So what we can do is we can select this bit here, do shift S cursor to select it, select this bit here, shift S, selection to the cursor. And again, for the axis, I mean, just click on the five key to go to orthographic view, one key to look at it from the front. And you see this X axis, it needs to be parallel to the ground. So I'm just going to uh, select the bone and use the roll value to move it like so and UEFI script requires this to happen so we kind of have to do this. Now uh, one, let me just make sure it is properly placed so just eyeball it into position and then you can select this bone, uh, select 3D cursor from this drop down menu and then you can do R, X key to lock the X axis minus 9 0 and one key to look at it from the front and for the toe bone the x-axis needs to point straight up so i'm just going to fix it so it's like like so using this this roll slider now i can select these two bones here or that will be the foot and the toe and then right click and do symmetrize to fix the other side we don't need the axes anymore so i'm just going to turn that off and well, I'm going to scroll down to the UEFI script panel and then do again set up character bone names and then pose the character. So this time the pose is a little bit better. The shoulders do move but are not quite as swept back as they were before. So now we can improve the pose a bit more. So if you see here, if I go to the side view with the 3 key, the foot is kind of pointing downwards. So I'm going to click on the B key and select these two bones here and then just rotate them into place. Uh, but before we do that, we have to set this to individual origins. So again, R key to rotate and then just rotate them into place like so. And from the front with the one key on the numpad, I'm going to rotate with the R key and then just kind of st straighten this out a little like so. And then back to the side view with the three key and then rotate a little, a little like like so. Now what we can do is uh, click on A key to select everything, G to grab, Z to lock axis and bring everything down so it's on the it's on the floor. Now I'm just gonna hide the mannequin so we can see a little bit better. G key, lock the Z axis, bring it down even more. Like, like that. One other thing we can do is to select the finger bones, uh, like so. So this one, that one, this one, that one, that there. I'll just use the B key to box select these last two and then do Alt R to straighten them a little. And I will do Control C and then do Shift Control V to fix the other side and that just kind of improves the position of the fingers a little bit. Now if we go into edit mode you'll see that the rest pose is still the original so we can update the uh, rest pose the same way as before. We have to select the mesh, go into the modifiers, copy the first one, apply the second one, uh, select on the select the armatures again, go back into pose mode, control A, apply pose as rest pose. So now in pose mode and edit mode, there is no difference. Let me just do all test to bring back the, the bones for the arms and I'm just going to hide these uh, large bones once more. Right, so no difference between edit mode and pose mode, which is what we want. Shift S to move cursor to world origin. Now we can bring in the meta rig, so I'm just going to bring back the mannequin and also bring back the meta rig. I'm going to select the meta rig armature. First we have to go into object mode, select the meta rig, 
Now the scale has to be 111. This is all 100. So I'm just going to do Control A. Uh, apply rotation and scale. So it's at the origin 000, 000, 000 is rotation and one on the scale. Now we can go back to the UFI script panel and just do okay. This time we want a second twist phone. So if you if you select this, the UFI script panel will make two twist phones for limb parts. So there'll be two twist phones in the uh, upper arm, lower arm, upper leg, etc. Right, so we just do pose meta rig, and the limbs of the meta rig get posed for us. So now we we don't need the mannequin anymore, and we can also select the meta rig and bring it to the front, like so. And then we can also um, select the meta rig and then select the arm shift, select the armature for the character, and then go into edit mode with both of them selected one key to see it from the front box select this side with the B key then edge key to hide it box select this side with the B key again edge to hide it and what we want to do is look at just the spine so the three key from the side view I'm going to select one one of these bones here press the L key to select everything G to grab I'm just going to match the neck the base of the neck like so and then just uh, these three bones G key I will match it like like that and then these two bones G key match it like like so and then this bone match it like so and then this one uh, G key match it like this now the rule for this is that let me just hide the original armature the rule is that rigify needs the spine to be connected so we cannot have it like the original because these bones are not all connected together so and we also want as slight a bend as possible in the spine so we want the straight spine as possible basically so i'm just going to move this a little bit forward and we're just going to move this a little bit back to soften this curve a little and then if we look at the um, original armature this armature has two neck bones while we have only one neck bone as per the epic skeleton so I'm just going to select the head bone grab it but I'm going to place it lower than it is in the original like so now we'll need to soften the weight painting for for the head where the head meets the neck but otherwise this is going to work just fine. So Alt H to bring back everything. Alt E to deselect everything. Go into object mode and Alt A to deselect everything again. Now let me just hide the original armature. See if there's any other change we need to make to the meta rig. I don't think there is. Well, actually, we need to improve the feed a little bit better. So I'm just going to go back into edit mode, select this bit here, G, X key to lock the X axis and just point it to the front like so. And I'm also going to grab this bone, G, put it, put this there, put this end over there. Um, I'll do just manual data entry, zero here, zero this, and also zero the row. Select this bone, three key to view it from the side, select this bit, G, Y, to lock the Y axis, um, then just select the entire bone and then just move it to where, where it meets the ground, the point of impact. So right, right over there, Y key, and like so. Now I can do right click on this, symmetrize and get the other side, and I can also right click on this. Uh, right click on this and do semi-tries to fix the other side. In fact, let's do them both at the same time so we're certain they are the same. I'll take to deselect everything and yeah, that looks good to me. Now, we can go back into object mode. I can select the mesh, go into the modifiers, uh, 
tab and then just apply the armature modifier then i will go into the object data properties go into relations and disconnect it from the original armature now i can just drag the mesh into the other collection and we don't need this collection anymore so i'm just gonna hide it and i'll take this to the top like um, like so i can then select the meta rig in object mode scroll to the view file script panel in the armature data properties and then i can do well i can just do generate rig and this might take a moment with the rig generated we can hide the meta rig uh, bring it to the front like so and then i can select the mesh shift select the rig do control p and just do armature deform not with empty clips or anything just simple armature deform which parents the mesh to the to the rig now i can select the rig go into pose mode scroll down here to uh, the generated rig functions and then i can just do build unreal skeleton and this might also take a moment And then I can do transfer weight paint to get the weight paint from the original character onto the new rig. And after that, I can just uh, click on this main control and see that the uh, the rig is working except for the shoulder pads and the collarbones and also for the knee pads uh, down below that, that had extra bones that we didn't account for. So let's fix those next. We can add additional bones to the character by modifying the meta rig. So I'm going to select the meta rig, go into object mode, and let me just hide the rig for a minute here. So well, what do we want to add here? Well, there's a collarbone that needs to go there, shoulder pad bones, and knee pad bones that go over here. There's also a foot panel on top of the foot, but that's a special case. We'll deal with that uh, later. So how do we how do we do this well basically we just edit the armature by going into edit mode you can add one of three supported samples to the meta rig so those are the copy chain super copy and simple tentacle and you can use these three things to add stuff like pouches or weapon holsters or hair and clothing so this will cover about 90 percent of what you need there, there is another way to add bones to the generated rig that I need, that I showed in a previous video. So you can check that out too if you if you have a different kind of rig requirement. But for for now, these are the three supported items. So let's use one of these to add a knee pad. I will make sure that the cursor is at the world origin. Then I can select basic super copy here and do add sample. Then use the S key to scale it up. So, and then I can simply move it into place with the G key. All right, roughly over there, and then move this back like so to make it uh, similar to what it is in the in the original armature. Do Control One to view it from the backside, and then G key and position it a bit more like so and i can also go into overlays turn on transparent bones to see through the mesh uh, three key to view it from the side and you can always update this later so i'm just going to leave it here for now we can change it later if we need to now in the bone data properties this one is called me underscore pad underscore l and in relations i just want it to be on this layer and its parent is going to be the shin uh, on the left side and deform flag is on now in post mode i want to scroll down here and turn off widgets i just want the control and the deform for these for these extra bones now i can go into edit mode again right click on the bone and do semi tries to automatically get the other side i just want to make sure that the other side is properly configured And that's the process by which we will add all of the other bones. So let's do that now. Okay, so once more, same process. 
I want to add another super copy, add sample, scale this up. And this time I want to use this as a collarbone. So I will put, place it over there. Maybe scale it down a little. Three key to view it from the side. Place it over there. One from behind. One. Maybe move it down a little like so. And this one is the collar left. Same layer. And its parent is going to be spine underscore well spine zero zero three. Go to pose mode, scroll down, turn off widgets, then back in edit mode, right click on this semi-tries to get the other side. And I just want to check the properties once. Make sure everything is correct. Okay, good. Now the last one that we want to add is, is a copy chain. So this one's a little bit different. Now we're going to add, so back in edit mode, armature section, this time we want a copy chain. So add sample, and this time we'll see that it has three, three bones connected together. So I'm just going to scale them up. Um, let's switch the pivot point to be, let's try the medium point. Right, okay, scale it up like so, so we can see the bones a little bit better. Maybe a bit more like that. And then I can set the cursor to this bit here. Do Shift S, cursor to select it. And then Alt A to deselect everything. I'm going to box select this chain here. And then do Shift S, selection to cursor. And then I can move, move these bones like so. And this one like there, like there. And just delete this last one here. Don't need it. Now, this one is called shoulder pad underscore L. And I'm also going to put it on the same layer as the other ones. And it's, uh, it is attached to the twist bone, I think. The twist, upper arm, twist, one left. And the other bone is going to be called shoulder pad panel left and its parent is automatically set because it's it's part of the chain so we don't need to do anything here now the first one i also want to go into post mode and um all right we don't have a widget for this one in any case so that's that's good want to make sure to update the layers on, on this bone as well. Shoulder pad, and I think that is it for this. So I'm just going to select both of them. Right click, semi-tries to get the other side. Now we can do Shift S, cursor to world origin. Then in object mode, I can bring back the rig. And then while, so while the meta rig is selected, we can go to the armature section and click on generate rig. Now it's important that the name of your character's armature be rig. If you have changed the name, you need to go into advanced options and update it there. But otherwise, it's just simpler to call it rig. So this takes a minute to update and we'll just wait until it is done. Now I can hide the meta rig and go into post mode and we can see that new control bones have been added for, for all of the shoulder pads and, uh, and the collar, etc. But we need to do a few more things to make this operational. Now one thing that has happened is all of our original Epic compatible skeleton bones that we had before have been deleted. So now we need to rebuild them. So we can just do that by clicking here once, but uh, do not do the weight painting again. You only need to transfer the weight paints once, even if the bones get deleted. Once you bring them back with this button, the original weight painting will still survive. So don't click on that again. Now we can go up here and shift click on this layer here. So that shows us the epic skeleton hierarchy that the UEFI script has created but you'll notice that the 
that it hasn't made any bones for these new control bones yet. Uh, so we need to tell UE5 script that there are extra bones. So we're going to do that now. So I'm just going to scroll down here to the UE5 script panel and go to extra bone tools. Now we added, a, we have to select refresh list to get update the list of bones. And now we added a knee pad. So I'm just going to select the left pad and this is going to be attached to the cap so i'm just going to indicate its parent and then i'm just going to register this bone here now similarly for the right side that's on the right half register bone and then we also added a collar so left collar that was on spine three register that on the right collar is also on spine three, so register that as well. Now for for the shoulder pad, uh, this is a little bit different. It's a it's a chain of bones. So whenever you have a chain of bones, it matter, it doesn't matter if there were ten other bones beyond this one. We only want to register the root. All right. So the rest will get done automatically. So this is the shoulder pad L. So I'm going to find shoulder pad L and. I'm going to have it attached to the twist bone on the upper arm. So upper arm twist underscore zero one. I'm going to register that. And similarly for the right side, I'm going to attach it to the uh, to the right side of the twist uh, bone. Okay, so register that as well. So now if we go back to the meta rig and have it generate once more, this time UE5 script will know that there are extra bones and it'll build um, everything. So we go into object mode, select the meta rig, and then just do generate rig and then just give it another name. Once that is done, it's the same thing as before. Click on the rig, go into post mode. We don't want to hide the meta rig now. Same thing as before, every time you regenerate the rig, the entire generated rig gets deleted. So we need to go back down here and just do build Unreal Skeleton. Now, what will happen here is that once you have registered phone, anytime you regenerate the rig, the, uh, the UEFI script will, will remember it. So you can build on this incrementally, right? So you can add a couple bones now and then regenerate the rig, see how it works out, and then you can expand uh, to other parts of your character. The other system that I had shown in the previous video, that was kind of a one-shot deal, so you have to plan out everything in advance and then just do it all in one go. So th this is a little bit better, I think, even though you have to regenerate the rig a couple of times to get it working. Now, there's still one thing left you have to do before this is operational. Rickify causes some naming conflict, so our output skeleton for these extra bones has a prefix attached to the bone name. So we need to update the vertex scripts to make it make it work with this thing. So I'm just going to go into object mode. I'm going to select the mesh and then in the I'm going to select on this icon and go to vertex scripts. So I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger and then select um, what I want to do here, I want to sort by name, right? And now I want to find the vertex scripts for all of our extra bones. So I'm just going to rename these to the Q underscore and the name of the bone. So that's what the bones are called in the output skeleton. So I'm just going to rename all of them. Q for the collar and the knee pad and the rest of them.
Now I can select the armature, go into post mode and everything should simply be working. So I'm just going to grab this control G key and you can see that the shoulder pads are working as are the collarbones and the knee pads are also moving along with the neck. Now the one thing that I just want to check quickly is whether this foot roll is working as well, right, like so. And you'll notice that we did not add a bone for this foot panel here. And the reason is that while we could just add another sample here like we did for the knee pad and the collarbone, but Frigify gets confused if we, we add a child to this foot bone here. Uh, this leg is essentially a Rigify sample and if you make additions to it sometimes it interferes with Rigify. So that's something just you just have to deal with when using Rigify. So you need to make sure that any samples you add don't actually interfere with the base Rigify system. The problem is that if you look over here in the original you see this heel bone it is connected to the foot bone. Now, if we add another bone here that is also connected to the bone, the Rigify system doesn't know where the heel is. So that kind of causes a problem. So we have to just deal with this issue. Uh, there, there is a way to add another bone here, but that means that we need, can't use the automated system. If you look in the other video that I made by manually adding bones, you can use that way to add, add another bone over here. But for this video, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to weight paint this entire thing to the foot. So I'm going to select this uh, here to get the export bones on the screen. And then in object mode, I can select the armature, shift select the mesh. So we have both of these objects selected. Then into weight painting. Now I can find the foot vertex, foot panel vertex grip, like so. And in, I'm going to uh, click on this little icon here to get to vertex selection. I'm going to do select to highlight all of these. Then I can select the foot vertex group and then just with the weight all the way to one, I can just do assign. And now this, this entire thing is weight painted to, to the foot. Now we can just do the same thing for the other side. First, I'm going to do Alt-A to deselect all of these vertex. And then for the right panel, just select the vertices. And then for the right vertex group with the weight to one, I will simply do Assign and now it's updated. Alt-A to deselect everything. Go back to object mode, Alt-A. Uh, select the armature, go into post mode. And now uh, this should be working. So let's try one of these controls. And then you can see uh, it is responding now. So I think that's all of our controls. I'm going to collapse all of these uh, windows here, these panels. Then I'm going to take rig layers to the top, rig main properties directly underneath. I'm just going to turn on all of these things. I'm going to turn off that one. Now, um, we just want to make sure everything is working correctly. One thing that you might notice is that shoulder pad is getting uh, st stretched and enlarged when it shouldn't be. So what we can do is just turn off stretching. So I'm going to select this and turn off IK stretch. Uh, same thing on the other side. IK stretch for the legs as well, I guess. And now if I move the character, it is working correctly. All right, so we're done in Blender. So let's take this thing to the engine. I'm going to go into object mode and I will rename the rig to armature. And we have to do this to export successfully to Unreal Engine. 
Now I can select the mesh, shift select the armature, go file, export, FBX, find a file name, I'll select the file name, and then in main I want selected objects, and in armature I want to turn off add leaf bones, we don't want any, and we want only the deformed bones. So export, and now in the engine we can do import, find the file, open, now it's important to select none for skeleton, so we, it creates a new one. We cannot use the original Paragon skeleton. And then do import. Now I'm just going to delete these three materials because they don't really do anything. And save all of this. Now in, I will double click the skeleton and we can see that this is in fact the Epic Compatibles uh, Epic Skeleton Compatible Bone Hierarchy here. Now I'm just going to add a few of the original materials. So this was lower body. Great lower body. And this is the upper body. And this was for the backpack. And there we are. So we have our Paragon character. Now it's also rigged in Blender and you can make new animations. But before we get into any of that, what I want to do is to go into Skeleton. Um, yeah, I'm going to click on this Options panel and do Show Retargeting Options. Then I will select Root, right click, recursively set to Skeleton, and then manually change just the root in the pelvis to Animation, and then uh, down at the bottom, recursively set the IK bones to also be animation, right? So we kind of need to do this to successfully retarget animations onto this thing. We also want to go to the retarget manager and set the rig to be the humanoid rig. And we don't need to modify the pose because the pose is already accurate. So just save this, close that, save everything. Now I want to use some marketplace animations on our new Paragon character. So I'm going to select some animations here. Uh, these are animations that I purchased from the Unreal Engine marketplace. So I'm just going to select this root motion set, right, uh, select all of them, right click, retarget, duplicate anime, retarget, and select the root skeleton. Okay, we didn't it's not working because we missed one step so let's go back here go to the rate double click on the skeleton you have to click on this apply to asset button and we missed that bit so save that back to our animations select one control a to select everything retarget duplicate select the new skeleton that we created now we can see the mesh so change the output directory I'm just going to create a new folder here and then OK and then retarget. OK, now let's see if this worked or not. So here are our new animations, right? So since this character is written in Blender, we can make new animations and we can also make, we can also retarget any epic skeleton animation that we purchased from the marketplace onto this thing and you can see all of this is working and because UEFI script also adds a root bone and IK IK bone so root motion will also work with this thing. If you wanted to import the character into Unreal Engine using the original Manicrens skeleton, we have to do a couple more steps. So I'm going to select the armature, going to post mode I will select only this layer to see the export skeleton and then right at the bottom of the UEFI script panel there is a set original bone rolls. Make sure you make a copy of the blend file because this effectively breaks not only Rigify but Blender itself. It's not compatible with Blender so just click here and we can no longer animate with this thing. So object mode, I'm going to select the mesh, select the armature file, export, FBX. I will select a new uh, file name, not the, not the other one that we just have put, and selected objects, 
go to armature we don't want any leaf bones we want only the deformed bones export fbx back in the engine we can do import and find the new file open this time in skeleton i'm going to choose the skeleton for the uh, for the original mannequin so i think it's this one and then just do import now you'll notice it didn't create a new skeleton here because we're using the original one so i'm just going to delete these materials like we did before and then i will open this mesh and set the materials here as well Now if you go to the skeleton tab, you'll see that we're just using the original mannequin here. And because we added twist extra twist bones and shoulder pads and everything else, all of these extra bones are going to be listed next to the original bone hierarchy. And now we can just do preview mesh and select any of our characters. So this is the Paragon character that we just rigged in Blender. So that'll be there and these are some other characters that we did in previous videos so you know it doesn't matter what character you want you can you can just pick any any preview mesh you want and also in animations without needing to retarget anything for individual characters we can just do the preview mesh and uh, just like that it'll work for anything now I don't use this method for my own game I just uh, rig a mannequin in blender and then i use that as my base for all all of my shared animations but you can use the original mannequin with original nothing skeleton bone rolls if you wanted to so that is all for this video and i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you soon